So there is a close cousin to the solenoid called toroid. So a toroid is basically a solenoid that's turned into a circle. You often wrap it on a core, a toroid shaped core. So you often wrap the wire on there because it makes it easier to form the shape and also makes it easier to draw. So I'm gonna have my wire come in and go like this, like that. So you can see, like the solenoid, it is loops of wire going around. Then you send the current in like that, and the current comes out like that, okay? And for this one, we're just gonna say we have in turns. We don't need to worry about the actual um, uh, turn speed at length for now, okay? So you can imagine this is gonna do something pretty similar. This individual loop would make a, a field going around, and you add this one to make a field going around. Basically, this thing makes a magnetic field that goes around like that. It makes a magnetic field inside of whatever material you're using uh, for the torus. So let's uh, define it. So it's a ring-shaped solenoid. And um, let's apply Ampere's law. So the integral of B dot ds equals mu naught i. Okay. So now, what Amperian surface? Sorry, Amperian loop. Do we want to draw? Let's draw this one. One that goes right around with the field at a constant radius. Because due to symmetry, we know that the B field, if it's going around the loop like this, it's not gonna change if you don't change your radius. Right? There's no reason it would change because everything is symmetric if you stay at one radius going through the uh, toroid. So let's see what we get. So we assume there must be some B field that's constant. We know it's always along DS, so that takes the dot product out of the integral. It's really just then the integral of DS, integral of DS around the loop is just the circumference. Right? So it's B times two pi R. B times two pi r equals mu naught. And then how much current goes through this Amperian loop? Well, it goes through on every turn. See here, it's going, like if we consider the inside of the Amperian loop, here it goes in, and it comes out and it goes in, and it comes out and it goes in, and it comes out and it goes in. So it's big N times i. You gotta keep in mind the difference between the general expression of the law, where this means the total current, and then when we apply it to our problem, where now this means the current and the wire. That's why there's an N times I here, and there's just an I here. There's actually different I's. The general current, the current, and the wire. So all we gotta do is solve that then. So B, then, I probably could even solve this without my notes. I think I, think I could, but I'll look anyway. Is mu naught N I over two pi r. So you can see it doesn't really care that much about the properties of the toroid. All it really cares about is where are you out here in radius and how much, how, what's the density of your loops. It doesn't really care about the inner radius of the toroid or the outer radius of the toroid. It just matters where you are in r. And also you see that the magnetic field actually decreases with radius. Right? So the magnetic field here close to this inside edge would be bigger than the magnetic field there would be bigger than the magnetic field there. But if you have a toroid where the little changes in radius are small, you know, if the toroid looks like this and you wrap around something like that, then the change in radius is pretty small compared to how far out you are. So often you can imagine that the toroid has a constant field through it or inside of it, but really technically it does uh, depend a little bit on the radius. All right, so that's it on solenoids and toroids. I think we need to go back inside because it's a little windy, there's a lot of noise, a lot of distractions. We really have to focus on our physics. So let's get back to Hersey and Amphitheater.